In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple physics equation solver. Now, physics has a lot of different equations that we're going to be using, but the main goal of physics is not to know how to use equations correctly, but rather to understand the physical uh, concepts that are involved. So sometimes performing the calculations is just something secondary, but a necessary evil that we'll have to do. What I'd like to do is show you a little tool that you can make if you would like to make the math work in this class just a little bit quicker for your homework. So I've gone to Google Drive, and I've created a uh, Google Sheet, and I've named it physics equation solver. Um, I'm working right now in sheet number one and I'm going to rename this one here uh, to be my kinematics sheet because this would be my first of my chapters where I could put a bunch of different equations that relate to here. I could then add others down the road. Um, for example, if I wanted to add a forces sheet later on, I could certainly do that. Um, not that we're going to do that in this activity, but just showing you how you can create a whole bunch of different sheets and keep your um, calculations separate from one another. Now, in, this is one of the first equations that you're going to encounter in the kinematics section. When you're undergoing accelerated motion in which you do not know the displacement of the object, you can figure out either the final velocity, the initial velocity, the acceleration, or the time given three of the variables um, with one missing. So, for example, the variables that can be collected and used in this equation are going to be VF. Whoops, sorry. Autofill sometimes gets you there. Um, VI. A and T. I'm just simply listing the variables that belong to this equation. Now these four cells that I'm going to use here will uh, be the place where I place numbers that I will be using. We know in physics or actually any problem solving approach that we list all of our given information and then indicate the unknown. Now in this case the unknown we will leave blank. So for example if I knew my VF, my A, and my T and I put in three values and I didn't know my VI I would leave it blank and the calculator will take advantage of it for us. So for example let's say in this particular example I started off with a velocity of zero meters per second and I was undergoing an acceleration rate of 2 meters per second squared and I did this for a total of 2 seconds worth of time. Um, I've already formatted this so it'll show three cells. I want to know what the resulting VF is here. Now most of us probably could do this in our head. For example, if I place a zero in for VI, I would get zero. And then I would add the product of 2 times 2, which would give me 4. So 0 plus 4 would tell me that my final velocity here would be 4 meters per second. Um, but this is a simpler way to do it, particularly when the equations get really involved and if I have to move variables around. And what we can do here is show how this was solved. So for example, if I wanted to calculate this VF, so these would be my raw data or my data that I would enter, and this row 4 would be my calculator row that will show my calculations. So what we could do is we would say that, well, VF is equal to, so we program our cell by saying equals this cell plus this cell times this cell. So if we were trying to calculate VF, we would have to take this VI value, multiply it, I'm sorry, add it to the product of these two values. So we said it's B3 plus C3 times D3. Now notice order of operations didn't care about placing parentheses here um, because it will know to multiply these before we add them. So we don't need to close them in parentheses, but you certainly can if you would prefer. Now if I do that, whoops, didn't mean to do that. I have to hit enter. We would see that it performed the uh, calculation and gave us the answer that we were expected. Now, for example, let's say that I didn't start with a velocity of zero. I started with one of one. Well, we would see that one plus the product of two times two would give me an answer of five. And we see that it's performing the calculation for me here. Okay, so the beauty of this is that if I program every cell to just basically pre-isolate the variables before I start, then I can just simply perform this calculation. So for example, if I wanted to solve out VI, I would need to move the A and the T to the other side. So that would mean that I would basically have VF divided by the product of A times T. So what we would say here is that this cell then would be um, this cell. Oops, sorry. Um, I think I said divided by by accident. I meant minus the product of A times T. So we would say subtracted by the product of A, which is this value, times T. Then we hit enter again, and we would see that this gives me negative 4, which really doesn't make any sense because it thinks that this value is currently 0. So we will, for example, if I put a 0 in here, it would change the numbers up. So 
what we'll do is we'll get rid of that for the moment so we won't see any numbers here um, to avoid any distraction. Now if we wanted acceleration what we would see is we'd have to move the VI over by subtracting it so this would be equals um, if we're trying to isolate the A it would be the VF minus the VI which would be this cell um, now these would have to be divided by T and order of operations will matter here because I must subtract before I divide so I'm going to go back click put some parentheses in here and then I'm going to use the slash to divide and I'm going to divide it by this time and whoops I keep doing that and I hit enter and I get a value here now it says that it doesn't understand I'm dividing by zero that's because the time is zero at the moment that's okay we're not looking for this answer right now now the final thing that we can do is if we try to isolate T basically the same thing is done so this would be equal to the VF minus the VI again I should have probably started with the parentheses but so I have to go backwards here put these in divided by the time oh, I'm sorry divided by the acceleration and I have my values here so at this point what this will allow me to do is solve for anything we want so again for example let's say I gave a value of VI of 1 an acceleration of 1 and a time of 1 well 1 times the product of 1 plus 1 will give me 2 so what we see here is it calculates this one. Now these other values again are junk. They don't mean anything because they're trying to perform calculations off of values that aren't here. So if we remember that when we create this document, the answer that's below the one that was left blank is the only answer that's actually uh, correct. Now there might be others that are correct by chance, but this would be the only one that's correct. So uh, for example, let's say I knew an example where I didn't know these. But I did know that the VF, for example, was 5. I was accelerating at a rate of 1. And it took me 2 seconds to get there. Well, what I can do is I can see that my initial speed in that case must have then been 3 meters per second. So what this does, it allows me to basically just set up the calculation. And I don't have to redo the algebra anymore. Because I did it one time, and it's always the same algebra. So what I could then do is in some cells below it, I could do exactly the same thing for all the other equations. And then I could do it on a variety of sheets. Hopefully you learned a little bit from this little tutorial, understanding how we can make life a little bit easier in this class when we're not worried about how to solve the calculations or actually enter the numbers into the calculator, but rather just get a quick answer that goes with the concept that was involved.